I use digital storytelling uh, and production as a way to engage with unheard stories. I decided to use this model that I developed with um, through a U.S. Alumni Ties grant a few years ago to, to use really digital storytelling as, as a platform to tell stories in a way that they're not usually told and to open up difficult conversations. Erin chose the topic for us uh, here in Zambia, knowing obviously what was most pertinent and relevant to his, to his home culture and his home country. We selected the topic of teen sexual and reproductive health. Um, once we received the grant, um, we decided that we would uh, partner with some key organizations in Lusaka, including the Media Network on Child Rights and Development, um, as well as finding uh, the filmmaker who would help us make this project come to life by telling stories of five young people here in Lusaka. And so what we are trying to do is to normalize this conversation to make it normal for young adults um, to have these conversations. Especially when this topic is currently uh, pretty taboo at home. Um, there's, a, there's a space for them to come and ask questions and to, to learn information that is, uh, is very impactful. The second component of the project is to use this film in yeah. training teachers, invited How teachers from local approach. secondary schools, as well as three of our young activists and, and, and um, participants in the film to join together and put their heads together around what is the role of the teacher and sharing best practices. Wow, today has been mind-opening, looking at how to incorporate sexual productive health in a rather different form, on how to make the learners more open. We hope to receive the video, then we could actually share it on a bigger platform. When we were shooting the documentary, we were telling the teachers, and now that the teachers were watching and they were getting that information that we needed those teachers to get, so I felt very happy. I'm glad that they heard my voice. so. It's now them to, 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 to put things in, in place in order for us pupils, children out there to benefit. Through film, people are able to identify with the different leading characters who will be on screen and they're able to relate to their experiences. They're able to see themselves through those characters who are appearing on screen. There's often so many conversations about teens or young people that are had without them actually being present. And here we really focused on not only bringing their voices into the space, but having their voices be the center of the conversation. So at the end of the workshop, we gave uh, teachers and students an exit survey, asking them um, what is their likelihood of replicating this training, which is really the ultimate goal, is to have it be um, a train the trainer format. Every single attendee said five out of five, I plan to replicate this training and use the information uh, that I learned here today with, within six months of attending the workshop. The word has, has already started to spread. So I hope you're having an amazing, amazing day through to DC Talk Radio 90.9 FM where your issue is our concern. We have an interesting show today and we're looking at teen sexual health and teachers' role in fostering open conversations. So our objectives are to inform the young ones, the teenagers, with, uh, with regards or issues surrounding uh, sexuality, uh, reproductive health and sexuality. I gained access and advocate for uh, increased conversation about sexual and reproductive health. Um, we've also engaged with youth from the community of Lusaka to uh, talk to a group of a group of young people there. Our two film participants, so our two of our teens, they took the floor immediately. Uh, we screened the film and right away this this peer-to-peer -peer exchange started to naturally unfold in a really beautiful way. I am curious to see and know and learn what are some of the uh, uh, experiences that the young people have in trying to access information on HIV and AIDS in the rural areas. The most critical piece, I think, to this project is, is having really strong partners here, here in Lusaka and here in Zambia. 
and you know, in our efforts to really scale this up and make sure that it's replicable around the country, um, we're excited to continue partnering with organizations who, who are already doing work in this space because of this grant that we've received. There's so much potential for this project and, and the way that it's continuing to develop uh, beyond the scope of the grant, which is, I think, the, the ultimate goal, that it continues long after the grant period has ended and becomes an independent initiative that will continue to grow for a long time to come.